In our previous video, we put these equations in a form that was ready to be integrated, ready to be solved, using Euler integration, forward Euler method. And I want to show you how to do this in a Google Sheet now. You can use any spreadsheet program that you like, if you like numbers with a Mac or Sheets, Google Sheets, or you could use Excel. Any of those will work. All of these commands work identically in all of those. So I want to have heading labels here in each of my columns. I'm going to have my first column be the day, how many days have gone by in the epidemic. Uh, we will have susceptible. That's the S of our model. We'll also have infective. These are people who are able to infect others. And then the third category, removed. These people have either recovered or are no longer part of the population. We also need a few parameters here. I'm going to have a time step. Uh, so here we'll enter dt for the size of the time step. You can have, you can see that in the end of these formulas. That's a factor that we multiply by. I also want to have a value for beta. Remember that is the parameter that controls the rate at which individuals pass from susceptible to infective. Then we have our second parameter, gamma, which is 1 over the number of days it takes to recover. Let's put in some values here. At first, we'll step along one day at a time, only updating the model uh, day by day. And beta, let's say each individual contacts 0.6 susceptible individuals per day during their infection. And uh, let's suppose it takes them 10 days to recover, so this is 0.1. 1 over 10. Our first day will be day 0, and then each day will equal the day above it. Notice I click on the cell above, and it gives me this highlighted in yellow A2, but this is a reference to the cell above whatever the current cell is. And then I'm going to add an amount. This amount, E2, I want to lock it on cell E2, and to lock that in position, we put dollar sign, meaning keep this value, dollar sign E locks the column and dollar sign 2 locks the row. So each of those dollar signs causes this to be an absolute reference to a cell. It's not saying go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and up 1. It's saying always look at cell E2. Entering that formula, I see that it's promoted my data 1, and here's the magical property of spreadsheets. I can click in this little blue box when I get the plus sign or cross, and drag it down, it automatically applies that formula to the whole column. Each value is equal to the value before it plus dt. You can see what happens if we change the size of our time step. If we update twice a day, uh, now I have days that are listed every half day. Let's keep that at 1 for now. Now we just look at our formulas, and to get the i plus first value, I need to know the previous value. So how many people do we start with? Let's say our total population is 1, and the initial infective population is 1 tenth of 1 percent, 0 0.001 of the whole population. No one has been removed yet, and susceptible will be 1 minus the fraction of the population that's infective right now. So that's what we expect, 0.999. Uh, now we use those values from day 0. Those will be our S sub i, i sub i, r sub i on the 0th day to get our day 1 values. So susceptible on day 1, that's my i plus 1 subscript here, represents row 3 now. And we're going to refer to row 2 for subscripts of i. So this will equal, to begin a formula, I have to type equal and then refer to the susceptible on the previous day. You can see that here. Minus, use our parentheses. Beta, I want to lock that in place. So that will be dollar sign $E dollar sign 4. Times S sub I times I sub I. Notice these are both in the previous row. Times our DT parameter. And remember, again, we want to lock that in place. So I'm using my dollar signs similar for the infective formula. It equals the previous value plus parentheses our beta parameter dollar sign e dollar sign 4 times the previous s 
times the previous i minus gamma, lock that in place with those dollar signs, times the previous value of i. And remember, uh, times, if this wasn't clear, it's shift 8 on most keyboards. That's how I get the asterisk for multiplication. And I still need to multiply by the size of my time step, which here is one day. We're locking that in place. There is our formula for that change. And removed, you might notice there's a simple way to do this. The sum of these three always has to be the whole population. So that means these three numbers on any given day have to add up to one. So I can simply say 1 minus the value of s and minus the value of i, and that will give me the value of r. You might wonder why these haven't changed. I'm not showing enough decimal places to see that yet. But now we've actually completed the whole algorithm, and all we have to do is drag this down, and we can see that the numbers are changing. Let's drag down an entire row so we're also promoting time. And suppose we want to simulate a month. So let's drag just a little more than 30 rows. I'll go to 35. So we have 35 days, 33 days of simulation, because our first two rows were the headers and then day zero. So scrolling back up, I would like to visualize this so I can make some meaning out of it. So I'm going to click right in the capital letter A, hold down Shift, and click in the capital letter D, and now I want to insert a chart. So I'm bringing down my menu here, insert, chart, and the type of chart I would like, I would like to use, oh yes, let's use a line chart. And get this out of the way so we can see, and Let's make it a little bit smaller so that you can actually see it. There is our prediction. And this can actually update live as I make changes to those parameters. So right now I see that the peak is around 57% of the population infective on day 20. What if we change how frequently people contact susceptible individuals. We'll promote that from 0.6 up to 0.8. And you can see that the peak is now both earlier. It's on day 15. And we've gone from 57% up to 67% of the population. If we promote this all the way up to 1, we have an even higher peak infective rate. And even earlier, looks like it's on day 13 now. So you might notice things get a bit dicey looking if I make this a really big parameter, uh, beta value of 2. And this angularity is showing that there's an artifact in our algorithm now. I even see that the susceptible population dropped below 0 at some point, which is totally artificial. So what that means is we need a smaller time step, let's say every half day. And we can see that that made it a little bit smoother. I still think that looks a little bit suspicious. If we go to a quarter day, now I can see it's actually looking smooth. Now, looking smooth is never the best indicator that you've actually resolved the behavior here mathematically with enough detail to determine that we really want to be able to change dt and have the values of our prediction change by an amount that we find acceptable. So we might set some tolerance and say, make dt small enough that uh, we no longer see additional benefit from making dt smaller. But that's the basic idea of how we Im implement the forward Euler algorithm for looking at this model, the SIR model. There are more advanced ways of integrating these. They might not be quite as intuitive and take a little bit longer to explain, but this one qualitatively shows you and quantitatively shows you how the model works and how it advances over time. If you want to simulate more days, uh, we just drag that last row down further 
and we might need to reconfigure the graph Let's go a bit further because we lowered our time step to a quarter day. So this is updating every six hours in the model. And I see my graph no longer includes all of the days that I want it to. So dragging this down until we have as many days as we want to see. If I have a quarter day and I want a month, I need more than 120 cells there. So selecting those four columns again and inserting a chart. We can now see a smoother simulation over a longer amount of time. We have the peak there at 0.82. Suppose we wanted a tool that tells us what exactly is the value of that peak for any value of beta and gamma. Then we could use the max function. Here I can say uh, I'd like to know peak infective. And that's equal to max of column C. I can just click in the capital C here and I'll get a C colon C, meaning look at the whole column, tell me the maximum value. And that lets me change my value of beta. Let's decrease our contact by social distancing. We'll lower this from two to one. And we watch the peak infective drop from over 80% to 60%, 68%. Uh, we can lower this further let's say 0.4 and you can see this is saving lives and preventing strain on the medical system by just washing our hands and social distancing so those are uh, that's the technique for visualizing the values in the SIR model you can see as the peak gets lower, it also happens later. We've spread infections out over time. But you can also see if you run this long enough that if you make beta small enough, you'll retain a population that is still susceptible, meaning they were not infected. And that's buying time for vaccine development and herd immunity by other methods. So I hope that is a helpful look at how to implement the SIR model with Euler integration in a spreadsheet.